earlier this year, the California-based utility Pacific Gas and Electric filed for bankruptcy protection as costs related to wildfires ballooned. It was probably one of the clearest cases of how climate change wiped out a company that hadn't done enough to prepare for a warming planet. PG&E faced approximately $30 billion in liabilities as a result of its role in the 2017 and 2018 fires. State investigators linked 100 deaths to the fires. The federal judge, William Elsa, blamed the cause of some of the fires on the utility's negligence. The judge also said the utility paid $4.5 billion to shareholders in dividends over the past five years while failing to take adequate safety precautions. Germany's car industry is facing up to the threat of losing its crown as the leading center for production. A series of missteps from diesel cheating scandals to the lack of preparedness for the end of the combustion engine has left the road open to Uber, Tesla and Chinese electric brands. An industry that employs more than 800,000 people is facing a make or break moment. Now, both cases raise many questions. Are businesses doing enough to prepare for climate change or do executives have their heads in the sand? According to the Global Commission on Adaptation, businesses need to plan more for a warming planet. Companies that do not adapt may not survive. It claims investing $1.8 trillion to climate-proof businesses and the broader economy by 2030 could generate $7.1 trillion in net benefits. Half the world's biggest companies believe climate adaptation could result in $236 billion in increased revenue. Economists have long argued that putting a price on greenhouse emissions is the fastest way for business to make changes. Nearly 4,000 firms with revenue of about $7 trillion already participate in some form of carbon pricing. And one of the authors of that report is Feiki Sebesma, chief executive of Dutch life sciences company Royal DSM. Our economics editor, Abid Ali, caught up with him and began by asking what signal was being sent to businesses with the lack of political will from the likes of President Trump, who withdrew from the Paris Climate Change Accord. Well, not everybody, as I said, is making the right step up in terms of climate mitigation. And we should, because we have agreed as 200 nations in Paris in 2015. But I think all countries in the world, whether you uh, step up on climate mitigation or not, need to protect your own people, your own business, the most vulnerable in the world. So every nation, every company in the world need to step up on climate adaptation in your own uh, interest. And I think we need to do four things especially. First of all, create more transparency on how climate risk are influencing you as a country, and every country is exposed, or you as a business in terms of your supply chain, in terms of your locations, or whatever. Transparency. And also for investors, that is very important. Secondly, you need to protect your own operations, taking care of your own supply chain if you talk about food and agricultural products or flooding of your sites or droughts that your workers cannot come to your sites. Thirdly, you need to focus on innovation, trying to develop new products, new solutions. And as a company, you can make money and as society, you're served by those innovations. We, for example, make the oceans more resilient for fishing. We make agriculture in Africa more resilient to that. And the fourth element is advocacy, uh, to advocate for climate mitigation as well as adaptation. And I think there is no country in the world who can escape from that. You mentioned investors in, in your examples that you just gave there. Um, for too long, businesses have been run for shareholders and to make bosses richer. Um, so how are you going to make this transformation now to say, you know, the environment is very important as well? Well, there is no company who can be successful in a world that fails. At the end of the day, that will hurt you as, as a company. And the economy was never invented to make money. Money is a tool tool to all live happily here all together. And the world is threatened. Inequality, hunger, climate change, ravages, etc. So therefore, it's in the interest of business itself. Therefore, it's in the interest of the 
uh, economic system, the resilience of our economic system, to go for more value creation than only shareholder value creation, but also for society, your customers, your employees, etc. And I think more and more companies see that. You see the Business Roundtable in the United States, 180 companies, 180 CEOs, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, said, hey, there are more stakeholders than only the shareholders. And of course, as companies, we are not philanthropic organizations. We need to make money. But there are more interests than only making money. And there's more interest than only the short term. And addressing climate change via mitigation and addressing adaptation is in the interest of all countries, is in the interest of all companies, just to future-proof your business. And investors, investors should be interested in how companies are exposed and what companies are doing uh, to keep the business up also in the long run. Just looking at the world around you right this very moment in time, the, econo the global economy is slowing um, and there's a trade war going on between the United States and China, which is having an impact on a lot of other countries. How is it affecting you? How is it affecting the world? What's your opinion as to what's going on? Well, let's have a look to what's happening in the world with all the trade issues or the geopolitical tension. I think if we look back a little bit, globalization is an essential part of our economic system. It basically, our economic system is based on specialization. You are better in this, I'm better in, in another thing, and let's exchange at the end of the day. That is the essence of our economic system, trade, specialization. And globalization brought prosperity for many countries in the world, for billions of people. But not for all countries and not for all people in all countries. And what we need to do now is not put fences around countries or businesses, but making globalization more inclusive for all. That is the way uh, to go. Because globalization uh, is, I think, the essence of our economy because it is based on the specialization uh, model. And you see a little bit at this moment that people try to put fences around things. I see that as a temporary movement. We as a company, because we are especially in food, are not so much hurt by that at this very moment. But it's not a good thing and it is not the right reaction on a correct observation that globalization did not bring prosperity for all. Make it more inclusive. That was Feke Sebesma talking to our economics editor.